It's so nice to see. Because you were virtual last time. I yes, 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 yes. I'm very excited you're here. Oh, Look I'm at your energy. Well, come on. Is I'm that happy. caffeine or natural? No. I was like, what are you doing? I'm Listen, they wind me up and, and out I go. Me out <laughs> like a like bunny. Wait, so happy Mother's Day and Thank Rad you. Mom Week. So wait, do y'all do anything special, you and your son, for Mother's Day? Do you know what? He is. He usually writes me. I make him write oh. me something. And last year was the greatest one. He had this jam jar that he filled with all these messages of things that he thought about me. Um, what? My, my favorite was, sometimes your hair looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> my, my kids would be like, sometimes your hair isn't in a bun. Exactly. <laughs> so wait, you posted this photo and it's you and your son, younger, and I'm, yeah. this is oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, First of all, <laughs> he has such rad rock and roll hair. Like, I mean, is that is? Are you happy? Because he got your hair. Yeah, that, he really yeah. did. It's, I love it. It's it's crazy and. But it's he, cool. It's yeah, like it's, it's cool. really it's rock hair. and roll. Yeah. And he's in he's in two bands right now. Oh, he's in a well. he's in a kind of jazz band and a rock band. A and jazz band. the I know. Wow. And the hair is the hair's great on stage. Yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He was destined to be on stage I with that I think he probably yeah. was. Yeah. So I find this interesting too. So you, this wasn't your idea, this was his. He wanted to go to boarding school. Well, so here's the thing. I would never in a million years have let my child go to boarding school because all, I'm like his worst groupie. Like all I want to do is be <laughs> around him all the time. Like, you want to hang out? But during is this COVID, why he wanted to go to boarding school? <laughs> Now, Kelly, yes, he was like, <laughs> we went in during COVID, the, 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 the school stayed shut in Los Angeles, but yep. they opened in that September of 2020, they reopened in England. And my son said, please, can I go to real school? And we only meant to go for a semester. And during that time, he reconnected with his British roots and fell in love so hard with Aww. the slate gray sky, the horizontal rain, the freezing cold, the pitch black by 3 p.m. I was like, this is my place. And I was like, are you sure? Like you he's were raised at the beach. He's, in, yeah, he's like, he, he's artistic. He's, he's into fully, it. Like, I love England for those reasons, by the way. Seriously? Love it. I was born on a rainy day. I was born in there, like literally it was storming. My brother will remind everyone because he got pulled from his game. Sorry. Like <laughs> some basketball game. I'm like, you aren't gonna be a basketball player, it's fine. Like it's like, but anyway. We are here with Mini Driver, give it up! Whose <laughs> new book is called Managing Expectations. Um, I <laughs> love this title. I always have a joke with my friends. I'm like, that's what I'm gonna name my book. I say, I change the name all the time. <laughs> but you always thought you'd name a book this if you yeah. wrote a book. Yeah. Why that? Because Did you have a hard time managing them? Yeah, I mean, I think we, don't we all? Like yes. the expectations that we have of ourselves, mm -hmm. that our parents have of us, that society does as women, parents, lovers, friends, everything seems to be about managing these expectations. And then the big sort of, spiritual nugget that you finally realize is that expectations is really the problem. And that mm -hmm. if we got rid of that idea of expecting something, but rather lived in this moment and allowed it to be something. So the title was ironic and, but we all do it. Mm. And the book is so much about how stuff in your life not working out is really your life working out in other ways. Yeah, um, I love that. I don't know, it's, it's, it's tricky. Everybody but... has a hard time, I feel like, with managing expectations. More so for ourselves, that we set for ourselves than even others. Yeah, you definitely, so? definitely. Yeah. Or if you sort of have in your head what you perceive someone's expectation of you to be, like it's all, it's all created and it's all mm. already setting you at a disadvantage as opposed to stay in the moment, live your, live your life and don't, judge it or expect it to look different just be in it it because seems more by the freeing. way when yeah. somebody dies who you love as anyone who knows it's like it's done and it is done fast this is what is over in an instant like there's no time to waste with yeah. thinking it should look differently let it let it be what it is and enjoy every bloody second yeah <laughs> Well, one story in the book is how dancing at raves, which I love that you and dancing at raves, got you into acting. What? Oh, my God. Well, I graduated, so I graduated from drama school, you know, this conservatory I went to study acting, and I was the only kid who didn't have representation at the end when everyone graduated. I, and that summer, I graduated in May, and that summer, it was the explosion of house music and acid house, and these raves were popping up all over the place. And I just used to go to dance to, to forget my worries. Escapism. I was like, I have 
no idea what my life is going to be now that apparently I'm not going to be an actor. Yeah. So I used to go dance. And because I didn't do all the substances that all the other kids were doing because I was square and I didn't Or really, terrified because a lot of it causes holes in your brain. I didn't really know what I didn't, what didn't, really know didn't what either. The, I didn't really... Anyway, I just... I was the sober driver coming yeah. home. Yeah. So my car would be full of crazy casualties. And there was, there was this other <laughs> Crazy kid. casualties should be your next book. By the way, next book. <laughs> Crazy casualties? <laughs> Am I going to steal that for a song? Yes, no, you're going to like, wait. Crazy casualties we'll is brilliant. Re we'll release the book yes. with, it'll, with come, it'll come with a song yeah, with it to download. Like, <sighs> but anyway, there was this other kid who, who was also sober, and we would drive home together, and just through the summer, we would just chat, and we chatted about boys and music. We both loved Nana Cherry and Belle Biv DeVoe, and we loved all yes. the same kind of music. And throughout the summer, we never talked about life or anything, and at the end of the summer... It was about to be September and going back to work and the dread was building. And one day she was like, you know, what do you do? And I was like, well, you know, I'm supposed to be an actress, but I mean, that's not really happening. And she's like, oh, that's weird. I work for a casting director. And I was like, do you? <laughs> that's do you so really? interesting. That's so nice that you do that. And oh. she was like, yeah, don't ask me to introduce you. And I was like, OK. And she was like, just kidding. Go on. Oh, my God. She was like, you should come and meet her. What is the and happenstance that, of that? that Monday, I went in. And this casting director, I had nothing. I had nothing to recommend me. She, like, no, nothing. She just had a cup of tea with me and was like, yeah, you seem funny. I'll call someone. Oh, my gosh. And she called, I got an agent, yeah. What? Yeah, it was crazy. It was Never crazy. give up and go to raves is what we've learned here today. Yeah, always don't do drugs <laughs> Don't do dumps. drugs. Yeah, and, de and dumps. <laughs> I like using dumps. So, wait, so last time we talked um, about surfing and Malibu. So, were you there when the fires got crazy? Oh, my gosh, yeah. I was working and my... I watched on the news as the fire was barreling down the PCH and it was headed straight for the little tiny community where I live. Yeah. And because of the bravery of 10 men who stayed and fought the fire, a couple of ex-firefighters um, and some lifeguards, they saved our community, but my community was completely cut off. They had one FEMA meal a day, but they were running out of gasoline for the generators because there was no power. They were running out of mm. eyewash, chocolate, booze, Everything. <laughs> all, all the, the key things. All of the vital when, when components things are hitting for survival. The fan, you need exactly. this. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, I'd just gone through a terrible breakup and was maybe not in the best frame of mind, but I was like, <laughs> I need to deliver goods. Yeah. However, the only way you could get in was by boat, and because people had started looting, the Coast Guard had issued a zero ship to shore. So you'd be arrested <sighs> if you tried to get in. Nonetheless, I found a boat and the captain... And I just had to figure out how I was going to get the stuff from the boat into the beach, and I needed some help. You became a good pirate. I did. I and like I it. Call, and I called, I, 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 found, I was like, who can I get to go do this with me? So I remembered this dude that I'd met at a friend's breakfast, and he was just this really intrepid Indiana Jones-type explorer. Perfect guy. Called him yeah. up. I was like, will you help me launch a sea-based incursion? <laughs> you... You might get arrested. <laughs> and like there was a big silence, and then he was like, "You may get arrested." And I, we did it. We got chased by the coast guard. We got, you know, there, there is a mounted gun on that boat. Like we, we had the gasoline balanced on the paddle boards. We were paddling it in. We dragged it on the beach. We ran away from. I mean, the coast guard hung out all day waiting for us to come back. We were, we were shipwrecked in my house that had no electricity, no water, nothing. And he basically, I asked him every question about why men are unfaithful, why men do the things that they do. I was like, you are trapped. I'm really sorry. I want to ask you a lot of questions. And he was, he was kind of like, well, all right. Oh, my God. And so we hung out the whole day. I got to know him. We made it back <laughs> to the so Marina much. Del Rey at, like, you know, midnight. We're standing on the thing. <laughs> I was like, I'm ruined. I'm never going to have another boyfriend. And he was like, well, I don't want a girlfriend and definitely not you. <laughs> but we stood there and then, of course, we became friends. And, of course, we fell in love. And, of course, we've this been together. This is a movie. Like, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> That's how it ended? Yeah. That's amazing. He's the greatest, he's the greatest person I ever met, apart from my son and my well, mother. Wait, when are you married?
making this movie. I gotta make it into a movie. I gotta make it into you a movie. You gotta make if it into only, a movie. If only I knew some people. Oh my God. God dang it. I'm just like, what? And you trap this guy. He's like, I just said I'd help deliver some supplies, Seriously. ma'am. It's amazing. I know. So you have this podcast that I love. We talked about last time you were here. So how's it going? Because last time you were on here, I love, if you haven't heard of her podcast, it's amazing. Yeah. So Minnie's questions are, they're so deep, so thought provoking. And the last time you were here, you actually asked me one of them and we didn't air it because I was a little afraid to air it because I was a very honest and still going through a divorce. But anyway, let's see the tape now. What question would you most like answered? Oh. <laughs> I, okay, good. This is good. This is very good. Well, this might not air. <laughs> <laughs> when will divorce end? <laughs> divorce end. It, it is, it, I know, like, look, it took two years for our divorce, right? And so, and I know people still in it that have been for like four years. It's already, and I figured out from your question, I was being funny, but it, I was being serious yeah. at the same time. And, and also trying to be respectful because we were in it or whatever. So I was like, oh, I just don't want to like whatever. So I didn't air it. But I wanted to air it now because these questions, there's seven of them yeah. that you ask. And they're, they're, you cannot go shallow like with these questions. Like you dive. They're like really intense questions. And the, the point was I was being funny about divorce if anybody's ever been through divorce. But it's more than that. It's grief. It is grief. It's such a loss. And it's like it strings along and just drags you with it. And, and luckily I don't read press or anything, so I didn't have that portion of it, but, but I was living it. And so it was like, it's one of those things where, and I'm forgetting the question was when-, when What question would you most like answered? Uh, answered, yeah. When will this get better? I know. And, you know, and I was being funny, but I was know. being real serious as well. As well. You know, yeah. I just asked, so I just had the amazing Christiane Amanpour, who you've seen oh, yeah. on CNN yeah. forever. <laughs> She just came on and we, we recorded the episode three days before the invasion of Ukraine. Oh. And so her answers though are so eerily poignant because when I asked her what question would you most like answered, she said, I really want to know if truth and democracy will survive. Um, wow. And it was so, it was so heavy and thought provoking. And, and now I feel like mine's talk, selfish. No, um, <laughs> it's like, no, we, no, not even because yeah. we, but you realize what that question, what that question reveals is so much of what is at the heart of really truthfully, like in you, like yeah. you really And what she deals with on the ba a daily Her basis. Her perspective yeah. is like that is she was, she's living in that, in World. that realm. And That's in that dark. Place. I know it's heavy, right? Yeah. Because we don't know, and then three days later, and then three days later, yeah. we're 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 watching this this extraordinary drama unfold. That you so, just yeah, you feel helpless completely. And sometimes hopeless. Sometimes, and then I don't know. Even within that, there are people who are so heroic within that that you it brings tears to your eyes. The heroism that you're seeing of mm -hmm. of men and women, and you know press that are there, and the way that things are. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. There's, I don't know what else we can do except offer our love and our support, both financially and with things that we can collect and donate. And thinking, absolutely. And thinking and knowing, like, even I mean, history will present itself. Atrocities happen, disasters happen, horrible things can happen. But there is always, and that was the same thing I was trying to answer with the question. I was like, yeah. is you do wonder when you're in it. You're like, will well, this will ever end? end? Like, it, you know, I, I and it will. We want to quantify things though, don't we? We want a timeline. I think again, this is why. Well, we want a light at the end of the tunnel. You do. Man. What is it Winston Churchill said? When you're going through hell, keep going. Yeah, okay, <laughs> like well. Just, that's, you just that's... have to keep, you just have to keep on because I think it does end, it becomes something else. Yeah. You know, it's, it's I do think you become, it sounds so cheesy. I do think you become stronger for it because you're like, whoa. Okay, I could take a lot. And it's whatever you're going through and to the validate stuff that. that we do to each other, whether it's in a divorce or in a war, like why can't we just it's... be kinder? I know. Why can't, why I think that... because what... people have a hard time, in my experience, loving themselves. They have a hard time loving themselves or being kind to themselves. So how in the world will they be able to 
show that or reciprocate it. Like if it, if it's shown to the, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, they yeah. won't. If you can't like yeah. truly like, I feel like the most people that are like the most unloving or like evil sometimes I feel like just like not in their best uh, version of themselves. Um, it's because of some some kind of trauma had to happen, right? Like there has to be something like that made them that way. That's yeah. I have to think that. No, I agree with you. I mean yeah. that it's. It's just the because I can't the... think anyone is a lost cause. Do you believe in that? I mean, right now I've got to say there's a couple people on the news who I feel are a lost cause. I but know. The truth I can't... is, you're completely right. They're I can't not because, believe it because nobody is. It's, I just think some people just are not going to get to it in this lifetime, and I'm not sure I believe in there being more than one. So it's kind of like, get to it. Yeah. Be nicer. And if there is more than one, Stop can invading. I come back as a man? <laughs> Just asking, just asking. You, you, just you, wanna, you wanna come back as a man? I do, I wanna know what that's like. I know what this <laughs> is like. I know what this <laughs> like. Like, I'm just saying. So we, we need another short break, there's no segue. Minnie's new book is out now, it's called Managing Expectations. Couldn't think of a better time to read this, people. Um, and be sure to look out for her podcast, Many Questions, uh, wherever you get your podcast. I swear to you, these seven questions will trip you out. Who are you is what you will find out. 